Welcome everyone, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Nadim Houri, and I'm the exec Executive Director of the Arab Reform Initiative, and I will be the moderator of today's session. Translation for this session. The webinar will be in Arabic, but if you have joined us on Zoom, uh, there is simultaneous translation, interpretation. Uh, you can click on interpretation on the Zoom button. Uh, for those of uh, those of you following us on Facebook, uh, the streaming will only be in, in Arabic. You will have a chance to ask questions using the Q&A function on, uh, on Zoom and uh, as well on Facebook, and someone will relay the questions. Um, I'm very pleased and happy to be a part of today's uh, session uh, where we will discuss one uh, main question. I'm also pleased to be with our uh, guests and uh, our speakers. We will talk about Sudan's revolution. What comes next? We know that after uh, the military coup on uh, Gen on uh, 25th uh, of October, the Sudanese people mobilized swiftly and on a massive scale to oppose the military's action. Uh, also, uh, many of Sudan's uh, international partners also raised the pressure on the military to restore the civilian-led transitional government and uh, also a deal was uh, approved and adopted this deal was also opposed uh, it was uh, an agreement a deal between the military and the former prime minister hamdouk and uh, at the end, uh, Hamdouk resigned a few days ago. And today there is one main question. Where is Sudan heading? What are the demands from uh, the protest movement and the main uh, actors in uh, the protest movement? Uh, to answer these questions, I am happy and honored to welcome with us today, uh, engineer Selma Noor. She is also uh, one of the founders of uh, the SPA, uh, which is considered one of the main uh, components uh, of uh, the professional movement uh, in uh, Sudan. And since the very beginning of the revolution in uh, Sudan, uh, this uh, movement or uh, Sudan's uh, professionals played a major uh, role which also impacted and was influential in a number of countries in Lebanon and Algeria. Uh, we saw how professionals in these countries tried to mobilize themselves and organize themselves following uh, Sudan's professionals' uh, path. We also welcome uh, Mr. Khalid Omar, former Minister of Cabinet Affairs. He is also a main uh, influential member of uh, the Central Council of Forces of freedom and the change. He was arrested following the military coup and was released uh, a few uh, a while ago. He was one of uh, the main opposition uh, figures uh, uh, who opposed uh, the military coup and he also opposed uh, any deals with uh, the military. I'm also happy to welcome uh, Dr. Mohammed al Asim. Uh, he's a member of uh, the uh, medical uh, committee. He was uh, one of the main activists and one of the main uh, figures of uh, Sudan's revolution. Dr. Mohammed is also uh, a non-resident fellow at the Arab uh, Reform Initiative. So uh, we are joined today with uh, by uh, these uh, three speakers. Welcome all. Uh, my first question goes to uh, Mrs. Salma Noor. My first question uh, might be uh, the following. S Sudan's professionals played a major role in the revolution itself, and the majority of, and the large number of uh, these activists were engineers. Can you uh, briefly tell us why uh, these professionals uh, played uh, this critical uh, role? Why were the uh, professionals in Sudan the ones who played this uh, main uh, role? Why were they calling for a, a democratic transition, for political change? And also, what are uh, the challenges 
challenges that you are facing today at the SPA and what is your, uh, how do you see the future? What is needed for the future? We have read the yesterday uh, one statement uh, from uh, the SPA. Uh, the SPA refused and rejected the United Nations uh, initiative uh, to uh, uh, call uh, for a discussion and a dialogue with uh, the military. So what can you tell us about uh, the way ahead? Go ahead, Salma. Thank you so much, uh, Nadim. I would like to thank uh, Ardi, the Arab Reform Initiative. Allow me first to uh, tackle the idea or uh, the SPA, to talk about the SPA, the Sudan's Professional Association, and our participation as uh, SPA in uh, the first wave of the revolution in December 2018. The SPA at uh, the beginning, at the outset of uh, the revolution, uh, we were a movement, we had uh, demands, and uh, also we uh, took part in the movement against uh, uh, the oppressive regime that controlled the Sudan through this, uh, or, uh, and we revoke and we ask for a number of uh, demands. So we started our activities in 2013, we founded the SPA in 2013 as well afterwards. We, uh, in 2016, we took part in uh, uh, the movement of the doctors and in uh, the civil uh, uh, demands that were asking primarily to uh, put an end to the oppressive regime that controlled Sudan. Finally, the SPA took a form uh, uh, more uh, recently, and uh, we had a charter and a number of uh, principles. Uh, the, so the SPA was officially established in 2018. We started our movement against the oppressive uh, regime, the former uh, regime, and in November uh, 2018 in a, uh, a press conference where we uh, talked about our demands for the minimum wage in Sudan. This was the first uh, pillar, the first uh, movement, or the first action of the SPA as a movement with a, a number of demands. Uh, this press conference uh, developed, transformed, it turned into a protest uh, uh, in front of uh, the General uh, Assembly of uh, Sudanese Workers and uh, led to a parliamentary session in the Sudanese uh, par uh, Parliament we were invited as SPA to take part in the parliament session uh, and take part in the study on the minimum wage. I don't remember uh, the date of the session, but it was in 2018. Afterwards, the SPA wanted to organize a protest in front of uh, the parliament also in December 2018 with the purpose of uh, uh, exerting pressure on uh, the government uh, to uh, raise the minimum wage in its uh, annual budget. Uh, the Sudanese uh, people uh, supported uh, the protest and also uh, they had their own uh, protest prior to our own uh, protest in uh, Tanbara. Uh, this uh, protest forced us to change our plans on the 25th of December. And the 25th of December, uh, we changed our uh, uh, idea, we changed our demands. Instead of just calling for raising the minimum wage, we uh, called for, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, for a regime change. Uh, so in, on the 25th of December 2018, the revolution itself, or the first sparks of the revolution uh, started. Afterwards, uh, the SPA under the lead uh, continued its uh, leadership uh, and uh, continued leading uh, the Sudanese revolution until uh, the moment uh, of uh, al qiyada protest. In January 2019, uh, 
the SPA launched the initiative of freedom and the change. Uh, this declaration, declaration of freedom and change, was ratified by political uh, parties who took part in our uh, protests in uh, uh, the streets. Uh, this uh, declaration was the nucleus, was the pillar uh, for uh, our uh, demands and uh, for the government uh, that led Sudan during the transitional government uh, following uh, uh, the fall of uh, the previous regime. Uh, we were the SPA, the powers of uh, the forces of freedom and change, a number of uh, Sudanese revolutionaries. And all of that culminated in uh, the leadership uh, protest that led to the fall of the former uh, regime uh, after four months of uh, continuous pressure. After that, we uh, saw uh, the experience uh, of uh, the transitional uh, government. Uh, during the transitional government, the SPA was a main uh, part of uh, the forces of freedom and change. Uh, but we also had our own uh, difficulties. Uh, we uh, asked for uh, syndicates to be formed to also reflect uh, the awareness, uh, the growing awareness and change in the various uh, professions. At the same time, the SPA played a political uh, role from uh, the inside of uh, this uh, political uh, uh, governing network. The SPA played a major political uh, role and uh, also faced some challenges since some political uh, currents, some political parties in were represented in the government and also on uh, the streets. So uh, these political uh, difficulties led uh, to the schism at the midst of uh, the SPA and between SPA uh, members. Uh, so this schism, uh, these political difficulties were organizational, but uh, at the beginning they were uh, political for many reasons. We had uh, some uh, different uh, point of view uh, concerning uh, how to run the transitional uh, movement. So we had divergent uh, points of uh, uh, view uh, between uh, various uh, factions in the SPA, but the SPA did not fall down. We continued our path. We continued uh, working to uh, create and establish syndicates and orders uh, that reflect uh, the professional's uh, uh, points of view. And also we created the Unified Bureau of uh, Medical Professionals, which was uh, the pillar or the nucleus of the order of uh, medical professionals. And we also uh, led the creation of uh, the order of engineers, uh, the order of uh, pharma pharmacists. The pharmacists also organized their own internal uh, elections to elect their own uh, president. So we uh, worked for a professional movement in Sudan that reflects uh, Sudanese professionals' uh, perspective and awareness. However, on October 25th, we faced another challenge that undermined our efforts in building these syndicates. This was the military coup. And like any military coup, they actually unlicensed all of these syndicates and orders that were organized and established during the transitional period. Uh, this was uh, something that we were used to, that we are used to in uh, oppressive autocratic regimes. So uh, to be brief, uh, this is an overview of our history at uh, the SPA and uh, our history as engineers in uh, the SPA and our work uh, at the SPA to establish and create uh, syndicates and orders in Sudan. After October 25th and uh, after the military uh, coup that uh, they tried to legitimize in the deal that was uh, signed by the military and Hamdouk, 
Turk, of course, the Sudanese peoples from the very beginning refused and rejected this military coup. And the Sudan's revolutionaries had one demand. They demanded for one thing, which is a civil government and to reduce the role played by the military in the government in government affairs. So based on these demands and from the very first moments of announcing the measures of October 25th, we saw a large number of uh, Sudanese going to taking to the streets and refusing the military coup. When uh, Sudanese people refused and rejected this military coup, they did it from the outset of prior to the press uh, conference also. They uh, refused and did not want to uh, know what were the points of this uh, deal, what were the several items agreed as part of this uh, deal. So uh, after this universal uh, uh, rejection of the measures of October 25th, after that, uh, the political uh, declaration signed uh, by General Burhan and Dr. Hamdok was uh, announced. Also, this political declaration was uh, rejected uh, by uh, Sudan's uh, people because it did not take into consideration uh, the demands of uh, Sudan's uh, pop uh, of the Sudanese uh, people and did not. Uh, enshrine uh, the uh, uh, civil uh, uh, civil government. Afterwards, General Borhan uh, stopped uh, the uh, constitutional declaration. Sudan's uh, people also rejected the declaration of uh, the 1st of October, which uh, led Dr. Abdullah Hamdouk uh, 45 days after uh, the, uh, signing uh, the 1st of October declaration uh, to resign because uh, the Sudan dance people uh, did not uh, approve uh, the political uh, path and the political uh, process. In the previous uh, few days, we have noticed a large number of initiatives and uh, uh, political uh, path uh, roadmaps to uh, put an end uh, to the political crisis in Sudan. However, uh, the large number of these initiatives did not succeed because they did not tackle the main uh, problems, the main issues in Sudan, which are the following. Uh, so Sudan's uh, military uh, uh, role in the political uh, process and uh, control of uh, government. Uh, most recently, the UN initiative uh, launched by Mr. Faulkner. Uh, we at uh, the SPA, we welcome any international uh, effort to put an end and solve the political crisis in Sudan. However, uh, these international efforts should uh, tackle the main issues, the main problems of the political crisis in Sudan. Then, uh, so any initiative should take into consideration uh, the aspirations and ambitions of uh, uh, Sudanese people, which are first a civil uh, government and a reduction of and the limitation of uh, the political role played by the military institution in Sudan. Uh, second, uh, to return to, to a constitutional regime, a constitutional uh, government uh, that uh, uh, preserves a civil uh, government and civil uh, control of uh, the government. Any initiative that uh, does not take into consideration uh, the real uh, problems and uh, the real issues of the political uh, crisis uh, and tries to uh, marginalize uh, those who took to the streets and uh, protested and uh, do not limit uh, the powers of the political, of the military uh, institution and ensure uh, civil uh, rule. I believe all of these initiatives will uh, not succeed and will be rejected by the Sudanese uh, people in addition to the Sudanese uh, parties and uh, the SPA and other professionals who are protesting and taking to the street uh, today. To be uh, brief, we are aware of uh, the current political situation in Sudan and uh, the security crisis in Sudan uh, today. We are facing a number of uh, security uh, breaches in uh, regional areas. Uh, we have our own uh, political uh, crisis in terms of uh, government. We are aware of all of that. We are aware of the 
current political crisis and uh, also have the economic crisis uh, that looms in uh, Sudan's uh, future. We know that we are going to face an economic crisis because of, uh, of uh, the uh, low agricultural uh, outcome uh, this year. So we are aware of the economic difficulties and we are uh, seeking uh, political uh, solutions for the current uh, political crisis. However, these solutions should uh, reflect uh, the aspirations of uh, the Sudanese uh, people of uh, Sudan's uh, powers and we want a government uh, at the image of uh, the Sudanese people and not a government that reflects uh, the perspective of General Burhan. Thank you so much, Selma, for this uh, clear um, overview. And now I give the floor to uh, Mr. Omar, who is a former uh, minister who was arrested. He also uh, was uh, a critical of uh, the political of uh, the military coup that uh, took place and he is all, also a member of uh, 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 the opposition uh, members uh, forces uh, mr uh, omar what is your perspective what is your point of view of the current political situation we talked about october 25th we uh, talked about uh, the attempts uh, to convince a number of uh, citizens to accept the military coup. And I also believe that you made the real statements criticizing, uh, criticizing these efforts. And you said that the decision of Dr. Abdullah Hamdouk was a grave uh, mistake when he uh, approved and agreed with the military institution. What is your current political uh, uh, stance and what are your demands for the coming future? What is needed today at the local level and what is needed from the international community uh, and the international institutions who are also following uh, and uh, monitoring what is happening in Sudan. I would like to uh, thank uh, the Arab Reform Initiative. Uh, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to uh, discuss and uh, talk uh, with you and tackle uh, the developments uh, in Sudan. At the moment, I believe that uh, the engineer, uh, Mrs. Uh, Selma, uh, gave a major important uh, introduction uh, and the overview of uh, the path in uh, Sudan and what happened in Sudan. To answer your question, it is known uh, that uh, following uh, the December revolution and uh, for after toppling uh, the Bashir uh, regime, the military institution uh, actually uh, arrested uh, Bashir and uh, the military institution uh, wanted to control uh, the government directly uh, through a military council in April 2019 and to lead uh, the country. However, However, when we rejected uh, that uh, the military leads uh, the government, uh, and when we said that uh, that is uh, not acceptable uh, and for the military to lead the transitional uh, period, we wanted the government to be a civilian government uh, led uh, by uh, the civilians. And uh, the military could also only have this sovereign uh, council uh, that would oversee, but without um, a clear interference in day-to-day -day, uh, gover uh, governing. Uh, so after the military was not successful in controlling the government, uh, and after a first attempt at a military coup in, uh, in uh, June uh, 3rd, they changed their tactics uh, to control uh, the government and and uh, tried to uh, find another alternative to controlling the government. Uh, they allowed uh, civilians uh, to uh, play a major uh, role in the legislative uh, process. Uh, they also allowed them uh, to uh, take uh, part uh, and uh, exercise a number of prerogatives. However, they uh, paved the way to a military coup by uh, changing uh, the balance of power uh, for the benefit of the military institution and the military powers. Uh, 
So first, they try to hinder the work of the government, uh, of the civilian government. They try to undermine uh, the prerogative of uh, uh, the uh, government. And also they try to utilize and deploy uh, the security apparatus uh, to hinder uh, the uh, exercise of power by the civilian government. So the SPA, for instance, uh, was uh, divided as uh, Mrs. Salma mentioned uh, previously, uh, because of the political uh, situation and the divergent uh, points of uh, view. And also throughout uh, the transitional uh, period, the military institution uh, tried uh, to overcome and uh, abuse the prerogatives of uh, the government. This led to a number uh, to attention to attention between the military institution, uh, the uh, revolutionary parties, the civilians, and the government, but especially between uh, the uh, those who would support eventually a military coup and those who demanded for a civilian government. Two months prior to the military coup, we noticed uh, daily discussions and confrontations between the ministers and the, the military institution. And it became clear uh, that they were uh, preparing and paving the way, paving the path uh, to the military uh, coup. We uh, talked to uh, the Sudanese people uh, clearly. We addressed the Sudanese people and uh, told them about uh, the initiative, about uh, uh, the plans for a military coup, and that we will not accept that. And also, we called uh, for uh, popular mobilization uh, to oppose uh, this military coup. On uh, October 25th, uh, they announced that a number of ministers were uh, actually arrested and that a military coup uh, took place and uh, once uh, the Sudanese people heard uh, the news they went uh, they took uh, to the street to reject uh, this military coup so we can say that the military coup was uh, stillborn because it was did not have popular support and did not uh, because the military institution did not uh, pick the right time uh, for a military coup to topple uh, the civilian uh, government because the civilian government had uh, num had a major support by the people uh, and despite of all uh, the crises uh, the government was uh, supported the civilian rule was supported by uh, sudan's uh, people so the military coup was botched because the military institution did not manage actually to lure to lure uh, major political parties to uh, support uh, the coup. So uh, the uh, military institution and uh, the coup was marginalized by the main political uh, powers, uh, the main political uh, parties, and no real political powers supported the military uh, coup. The military coup relied on some marginal support at the regional level by regional powers. And these regional powers tried to play a destructive role in Sudan and did not understand how the Sudanese population acts and did not were not aware of the fact that the civilian activists and civilian powers in Sudan were powerful and influential. After 30 years of uh, the regime of al-Bashir, it became clear that the current uh, political uh, powers uh, rejected any military uh, government in uh, Sudan. So uh, the military, in, military institution in uh, Sudan was uh, fractured, was not powerful enough, and was not capable of forming a government. They uh, did not have any political support, any nor any uh, popular uh, support. Until uh, now, uh, they were not able uh, to uh, mobilize the people to uh, support them. So uh, this uh, 
military coup was stillborn, did not have uh, the elements of success, uh, was opposed and rejected uh, by all factions of the Sudanese uh, population, all political uh, parties uh, of the youth, uh, the professionals, all of that all of these entities rejected uh, the military coup. It was also rejected by uh, the Central Council of Forces of Freedom and Change, by the SPA, who opposed uh, uh, the military coup. The SPA managed to uh, mobilize all of uh, Sudan's professionals uh, to uh, reject and oppose uh, the military coup at the level of uh, neighborhoods, uh, uh, local uh, regions, uh, to uh, mobilize and organize uh, this opposition. Uh, today, uh, the SPA, uh, the Forces of uh, Freedom and Change, uh, they all uh, reject uh, and oppose uh, the military coup. As our colleague uh, mentioned uh, a while ago, I believe uh, that uh, this uh, popular mobilization was enough uh, to put an end to, to the military coup and uh, the military coup will, would not have been capable of, uh, of uh, absorbing and handling this uh, popular uh, rejection. For the way ahead, I believe uh, that uh, Sudan, the Sudanese uh, people's uh, aspirations should be taken into consideration. The demands today are clear. We want civilian rule. Uh, the uh, Sudanese uh, people uh, were not uh, happy with uh, this uh, uh, with this uh, power sharing agreement between uh, the military institution, the military junta, and uh, the civilians. We want. 100% civilian uh, rule and for the peace process it to be a comprehensive a comprehensive a peace uh, process that take into consideration all of the aspirations of uh, the people any international efforts that support uh, uh, these demands is welcomed however at the moment the international uh, community, the international uh, role uh, could uh, be limited also uh, to uh, monitoring uh, human rights uh, abuse, uh, human rights violations, and how drones, for instance, were used uh, to uh, put in, uh, to confront uh, peaceful uh, protests. The international community is actually playing uh, this role in monitoring uh, these human rights uh, violations. I also believe that the international community uh, should not uh, take seriously uh, the statements of those behind the military coup. If the international community wanted to uh, take note of what is happening in Sudan. They should monitor what is happening in the field. Uh, uh, they should be monitoring what is happening in real life and not accept at face value the statements of uh, those behind uh, the military uh, coup because their statements go against what is happening in Sudan. So they uh, try to embellish, to hide their violations of human rights uh, by uh, uh, announcing and addressing the international community and telling the international community what it wants to hear. This coup is not only uh, dangerous for Sudan's future, but also for it could be a dangerous uh, at the regional uh, level. Uh, Sudan uh, has been uh, through a number of civil wars uh, for several decades, and uh, we are ready for a peaceful uh, process. However, today we do not have a government in uh, Sudan. Uh, today, this lack of government uh, led to uh, the rise of uh, uh, unrest in several regions in uh, Sudan. There is uh, sort of, there is a lack of stability in a number of regions in Sudan. So uh, those behind the coup do not 
only want to destroy Sudan, but they seek the destruction of all of uh, these countries in the region. Sudan was one of the stable countries in our region. However, uh, they actually, some regional powers supported uh, the coup uh, to wreak havoc uh, in uh, Sudan. Sudan today uh, is a major security risk for the whole region. And if uh, this unrest continues, this uh, could threaten not just the region, but the world as a whole. So uh, the solution in Sudan is a democratic civilian rule, a democratic civilian uh, uh, government, uh, because the current uh, military rule uh, would uh, threaten the region as a whole, would uh, threaten to destabilize uh, the region region as a whole. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Khaled. I just have two uh, questions following what you just mentioned. You said uh, that uh, the international community is uh, should today assess uh, uh, the performance of the political powers. They should uh, see what uh, these political powers, what uh, uh, those in government are doing in real life, but not just their uh, statements. As an opposition figure, uh, do you have any a plan? Do you have any uh, ideas of what could be needed in Sudan? What are the initiatives that are needed today uh, that you call for uh, to be implemented by uh, the military, for instance, for the military to showcase uh, how serious it is in uh, this peace process? Also, uh, Mrs. Salma finished uh, her uh, introduction with the, the uh, economic challenges uh, that uh, Sudan will be facing. Uh, and recently, we have been hearing a lot about uh, economic challenges. Uh, what are the measures that are, might be needed uh, to put an end or to solve uh, the economic crisis and also to return to a transitional uh, period? What are the measures that are needed for the return of a civilian rule and the transitional uh, period, the transitional government? And as an opposition figure, what uh, are your plans, your initiatives uh, to solve the economic crisis in Sudan today? Our demands are clear for uh, the military uh, institution uh, to, re uh, to leave uh, the government and for a civilian return to a government. We ask for a free uh, elections uh, to form a new uh, government. And as part of a transitional uh, government, uh, transitional period, we want to uh, unify uh, the military in Sudan, complete the peace process, and also implement the economic reform uh, measures and initiatives initiatives, in addition uh, to uh, implementation of uh, the al Hiri initiative and the attempt to, to solve the Sudan uh, debt uh, issue, I believe that uh, a message should be uh, addressed to the international community. The international community asked the military to uh, stop killing the protesters. But I believe that the international community Uh, uh, should address uh, the situation as a whole. The international community can not uh, stay silent while uh, the military is killing the protesters uh, and using drones to kill uh, protesters. Uh, this is uh, how uh, the those supporting the military who act in Sudan, they uh, kill these protesters. However, what we should be calling for is uh, the establishment of a transitional uh, government, a democratic transitional government. Thank you so much, Mr. Khaled. I give the floor now to Mr. Uh, Muhammad al to Dr. Muhammad al Asim. Uh, Dr. Muhammad, we talked a lot about uh, the violations. Uh, you are one uh, member of the Central uh, Commit Medical Committee. You actually uh, saw a number of uh, wounded uh, about protesters who uh, were wounded during the protest. Can you tell us uh, more about uh, the violations uh, that you? 
uh, were witness of. Uh, can you also uh, tell us about the role of uh, the Central uh, Committee and uh, the role that you played in calling for change? Also for other monitors who are not in uh, Sudan now. Do you uh, believe that uh, the people is ready to oppose, or actually we uh, saw that the people opposed uh, the military coup and we talked with Mrs. Salma on, of the role of uh, Sudan's uh, professionals. We talked with Mr. Khaled about the role of uh, opposition uh, parties and figures. Can you uh, tell us about uh, the youth uh, movement uh, in opposing the military coup? But let us first start with uh, uh, any type of documentations uh, and uh, documenting the violations of human uh, rights as uh, doctors. The role we played as doctors uh, since uh, October 25th and uh, until today. What uh, do you think are the main uh, pillars of uh, opposition and the confrontation and how can we oppose uh, the uh, military attempts uh, to transform themselves into uh, the main political power in uh, Sudan. I just want to remind you all, remind all of uh, our participants, if you have any questions, you can add them to the Q&A section bottom of your, uh, at the bottom of your uh, Zoom screen, uh, and I will ask them uh, to our uh, panelists afterwards. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Nadim. I would like to thank the Arab Reform Initiative and uh, my fellow speakers. In fact, uh, since October 25th, uh, the Sudan's Central uh, Medical uh, Committee and uh, also our uh, partners in uh, the Medical uh, Syndicate and Order, uh, the Committee of uh, Consultants. Uh, we monitored a number of uh, violations. Uh, we uh, have a unified uh, office, a unified Bureau of Medical Professionals, and we monitor uh, these violations. Uh, this unified Bureau, our office, and it was actually played a major role in uh, establishing uh, the order of uh, uh, medical uh, professionals. However, uh, the uh, main role that we play today at the Central uh, Committee uh, since the military coup and until uh, the current moment is we try to uh, monitor the violations, uh, be as precise as possible in uh, monitoring uh, these violations and uh, also uh, uh, monitor uh, the wounded in uh, the, uh, the field hospitals, etc. Uh, our assessment in the past uh, period of time, we, we conclude that uh, uh, the violations were unprecedented in Sudan. Uh, violations culminated in attempts uh, to uh, go into hospitals. So we secure, the security apparatus uh, tried to enter hospitals. They used uh, uh, gas uh, in uh, these hospitals. Uh, they arrested the, the wounded uh, from the emergency uh, rooms and operation rooms in the hospitals. All of these are, a new, uh, this is a new type of uh, uh, violations in Sudan uh, that we did not uh, see and encounter even in uh, the previ uh, even under the former uh, regime. Uh, all, we have this is new to us uh, and the number of uh, uh, death we have an, around 42 uh, protesters who were killed after the military coup a number of them were shot in the head or in the in the, in, uh, the chest and uh, also uh, uh, the security agents who were deliberate in uh, using uh, this uh, gas uh, and uh, they actually launched uh, l l targeted uh, uh, targeted the protesters when uh, they uh, launched uh, these uh, gas uh, bombs and they actually tried to target protesters heads and necks. The latest martyr that uh, fell in the, the 9 uh, January protest was a 16-year-old 
and uh, the direct uh, reason for his uh, death is the fact that he was targeted by the security agent in his neck. This shows and clarifies the fact that uh, this oppression of uh, peaceful protesters has for purpose not just to put an end to the protests, but also uh, to raise fear and then make the Sudan's uh, people afraid and lead them to avoid uh, taking part in these uh, protests. And also these acts of uh, killings and targeting uh, the protests is a repetitive act. We notice that these acts are repetitive in every uh, protest and that they target peaceful uh, peaceful uh, protesters. Uh, there is also unjustified use of extreme uh, violence. Uh, they were using weapons and arms, a battle uh, armaments, and not uh, uh, tools and equipment that is usually used in organizing or in uh, dealing with uh, protests. So we have uh, seen anti uh, aircraft uh, weapons that were used and we have seen um, that a number of uh, martyrs fell as a result of uh, suffering uh, at the hand of uh, grade one military equipment and uh, uh, arms. Also, uh, protesters everywhere are beaten violently and they are also arrested, uh, beaten and arrested. In a previous uh, protest in uh, December, we also monitored a number of rape incidents. Uh, female protesters were raped uh, by uh, the uh, security agents. Uh, this weapon, this instrument of rape, Rape is not new. It was used previously in Darfur and in the South. Today, we are seeing that rape is being weaponized and used as a weapon against the protesters. We monitored and actually registered a number of rape cases uh, and uh, targeting of female uh, protesters. The security apparatus is uh, also uh, limiting uh, all types of freedoms. They are uh, restricting uh, these protests and uh, movements. They are limiting the freedom of uh, speech. And they close a number of uh, newspapers, a number of uh, radio stations and TV uh, stations. And also, uh, they uh, utilize internet shutdowns every uh, time uh, they announce uh, something new, uh, they ensure internet shutdowns. All of these measures are attempts, uh, continuous attempts uh, of uh, the power uh, of those in power uh, to oppress the people of Sudan. I will move directly to uh, I talk about how uh, the people in Sudan opposed and rejected the military coup. As uh, our colleagues uh, already mentioned, Sudan's people went uh, to the street to oppose and reject the military coup even before the uh, declaration was announced and read on television. The people took to the street to oppose and reject any attempt of a military coup and to uh, preserve the path of a transitional uh, democratic uh, change. Sudan's people is still pursuing these efforts and against all odds, against all of these violations and uh, the risk of death uh, that is a daily risk. The Sudanese people uh, is still courageous uh, and uh, the people is still opposing. Uh, this military coup, I believe that any uh, person who could monitor uh, the developments or follows the developments in Sudan uh, two months after the military coup, anyone would uh, reach the conclusion that the country would either 
move toward stability an oppressive military I believe that the only path to stability in Sudan is not uh, military autocracy since uh, Sudan has been uh, ruled in the previous 50 years by military uh, power, by military autocratic uh, rule, which led uh, only uh, to uh, wars, uh, to uh, corruption, lack of development. And uh, the people of Sudan are aware today uh, and they are keen and they always call for this to respect the democratic path so the civil society in Sudan are, and uh, uh, this should be known uh, to the regional powers they should know that civil society in Sudan is different than any other regional country we have a multi-layered uh, civil society in Sudan which makes society strong and uh, powerful. So arresting a couple of figures in uh, Sudan will not put an end and marginalize the civil society. We have a number of layers of uh, civil society and uh, at uh, the basis of it, we have the basis, the base of the civil society uh, that uh, is modern uh, a modern structure that is unparalleled in the region. Civil society is uh, a grass has uh, a grass uh, roots in the neighborhoods and the regions and cannot be marginalized. So a uh, similar civil society with these different layers will be difficult uh, to. Uh, subject to oppression or to silence it uh, with a violence. And a period of three uh, years, the first uh, two years of a transitional government actually assisted or supported in uh, empowering a civil society and ensuring uh, that the civil society would cover uh, larger uh, parts of uh, the country and uh, led uh, to the fact that the military coup was put so virulently. Also, the revolution in 2018, I believe it played a, a main, major and a critical role in organizing and strengthening the popular movement. Today, we are in year four of uh, Sudan's revolution, if uh, the revolution started in 2018. So we are in a day in a year four of uh, this popular uh, movement, which is actually culminating uh, the popular uh, awareness and supporting people's ability to organize themselves and to be more aware of uh, the options ahead of them and this continuous uh, movement uh, for four years enshrined the notions the meanings and the values that uh, were uh, of uh, democracy of uh, freedoms and the peace as the main ideas the main demands in sudan as well as justice and uh, the calls for a democratic uh, government as the only path for uh, the progress and the development in sudan and the main and the only way for sudan to confront its different challenges muhammad i'm i apologize for for intervening, but uh, we are receiving a number of questions that uh, I want to ask you. And uh, we have a number of questions concerning 
concerning the regional role, etc. I will try to be brief and conclude. I agree with my colleagues that uh, the military coup in uh, Sudan was still born, did not have any uh, chance of success. Uh, this military coup is at its final, uh, it's in its, its final uh, days. And uh, today, uh, those powers who support the Sudanese people and uh, the future of Sudan uh, should uh, support for more unity and Sudan's powers should be a unified and create a network that covers the various factions of the civil society and the organizations because the civil society with this diversified civil society cannot agree on the details but we have to agree on the general principles on the main ideas that could be a unifying a factor for solidifying a democracy in Sudan and our friends should support us and they should be more aware of the situation in Sudan. If we do not understand the situation of uh, Sudan, what is really happening in Sudan, our interpretation of the situation would be uh, mistaken. Uh, some people might think that uh, military rule could lead to stability in Sudan. All of these are uh, false hypotheses that cannot uh, be entertained and we cannot compare reality in Sudan to the reality in any other country in the region or in any other regional countries or we cannot also say that a given experience in the regional country could be re-implemented in Sudan. Thank you so much Dr. Mohammed. I will talk about one point that you mentioned in addition to Mr. Khaled. One of the questions is is there any attempt uh, to uh, form a front uh, that would represent the various political currents and the powers in Sudan today? Khaled, Mohammed, Salma, any one of you, if you want to answer this question uh, very briefly. Uh, uh, Salma, you talked about uh, the schism and the divergence at the SPA. Are there any attempts now to unify uh, this front for the uh, coming period of time? I believe Khaled also wrote about this topic in, uh, in the past. I can, ask, I can answer your question. The forces of freedom and the change actually uh, had an initiative to form a wide front with the main actors of the opposition. Based on uh, this uh, proposal, we uh, discussed with a number of uh, parties uh, of feminist movements and civil society organizations that are not part of uh, the Council of Forces of Freedom and Change. We also uh, talked to a number of uh, Sudanese intellectuals, artists, and the writers. And uh, also we discussed with them the political uh, vision of the Council of Forces and Freedom and the Change to uh, put an end to the current political crisis and put an end to the military coup. We also were in content, contact with the professional uh, movements and the professional forces that are not a part of uh, the SPA and the Forces of for Freedom and Change. And now uh, 26 uh, um, entities, and we agreed with them uh, to form a, uh, an opposition uh, front to put an end to the military coup and uh, to unify the civil society actors. Uh, finally, we also were in content with uh, opposition uh, figures. Uh, some of these opposition figures were members of uh, the Forces of Freedom and Change, uh, and also some of them uh, were uh, formed after the fall of uh, the former regime. So we have been in contact uh, with them and we are working on a charter now uh, with uh, Rijal al mukawma or the men of opposition with the intellectuals and civil society organizations uh, to uh, create a unified charter and declaration uh, for the front uh, to uh, oppose uh, the military coup and uh, to uh, have a joint uh, roadmap for the transitional period. 
Thank you so much, Muhammad uh, Khalid. And uh, do you have anything to add? Are you optimistic when it comes to uh, forming a front and opposition front? Do you have anything to add, or do you want me to move to the next question? I uh, believe that we are conducting a real work with a number of uh, components and entities. Uh, we are uh, always in uh, contact uh, with uh, the Council of Forces and of Freedom and in Change. Uh, we are uh, open uh, to uh, uh, discussions with all uh, of the entities represented in uh, the opposition. I believe uh, we could reach a formula uh, front uh, that would be uh, the critical uh, component in uh, the end or in putting an end to the military coup attempt. There was also another question that I believe is inspired by the Egyptian experience. What is, what are uh, the solutions proposed to the military institution? The, the military usually in a number of Arab countries will uh, not leave power uh, if uh, their uh, economic or political powers were not uh, protected. And also security reform is a main proposal, is a main issue and topic of discussion. But what might be at the solution? What might be at the proposal? How uh, can you also in the question they said that they, or the participant asked, how can you put an end to the militias, etc. This is a question that was asked in Egypt and in a number of Arab questions uh, and then Arab countries. So what it could be uh, the proposal, what could be the roadmap, the initiative uh, to convince uh, the military institution. Uh, some participants some might say that uh, the military will uh, not be able uh, to put an end to the protest, but at the same time, the uh, opposition figures will not be able to put an end to the military rule. So is there a roadmap, uh, a proposal uh, that could lead to a coexistence or a peaceful coexistence between the military institution and the civilian rule? In fact, uh, Mr. Nadim, the main challenge that uh, faces a uh, democratic transition in Sudan is uh, twofold. First, uh, the security situation in uh, security situation in Sudan. Uh, the constitutional uh, document that was signed uh, attempted to uh, reach uh, this stability to uh, create uh, coexistence between the military and the civilian ruling uh, government. The Juba peace process also uh, wanted to unify the army and put an end to paramilitary forces. And uh, also uh, to uh, put an end to a military interference in civilian affairs. However, in the military uh, coup on uh, October 25th, uh, this military coup complicated uh, the, uh, the path to reach uh, these agreements. So it became difficult to reach a number of agreements uh, and to agree on a number of principles uh, because uh, this uh, democratic transition was agreed uh, upon in the constitutional document. The grave danger that we face today in Sudan is the security institution, this military constitution, and also the fact uh, that we have a number of uh, paramilitary uh, forces if we do not have a unified army, this is a grave threat to the unity of Sudan itself. We need one army for the military and to force the military out of politics. All of these issues, all of these topics are of great importance because they constitute a major challenge uh, that might hinder the democratic transition. 
Uh, second, uh, the main, uh, the second main uh, challenge in uh, democratic transition is the regional interference in Sudan's affairs. Uh, some regional countries believe uh, that uh, they have interests in uh, the uh, in uh, the fact that uh, Sudan remains under a military autocratic uh, rule, and they uh, support uh, some uh, factions uh, that uh, they want that want to uh, rule Sudan militarily. However. And the main uh, forces uh, that want to create uh, the future of Sudan is the people of uh, Sudan. In 2019, in 2018, and uh, prior to the revolution, uh, the reality is still the same. It's not uh, the same. The people today are more organized, they are more powerful, they are more represented, uh, they are multi layered, they are more innovative in uh, their opposition. Uh, uh, methods. So I believe uh, that uh, there is um, a consensus among the various factions of the Sudanese uh, people on uh, the main uh, topics and the main issues that should be uh, solved. This will help in uh, forming uh, an opposition front uh, to solve uh, some of uh, these and overcome some of the challenges soon, hopefully. Thank you so much, uh, Khalid. Uh, Mrs. Salma, do you have anything to add uh, when it comes to uh, the military institution? Uh, Mr. Khalid, you were in, uh, you were a member of the transitional government for some time. Do you believe we have this capacity? We can, can we turn now, return now to this roadmap? Can we convince the military forces and the military institution to set this one out, to leave power, which is difficult as we have seen in our Arab countries. So whenever the military assumes a power, they do not relinquish it easily. In 2019, I uh, believe we had this model of consensus of agreement between civilians and the military to work together for a transitional uh, period uh, and a transitional uh, government. However, the uh, military did not uh, uphold its part of the deal. Uh, they violated the deal uh, they uh, accepted at the, at the outset. However, today we should take a step uh, forward not a step back we need a new pact between the military and the military institution and the civilians this pact should lead to complementary rules and not to a division and a fragmentation of a power we this deal should lead to a demilitarization of the political process and a wide rejection of uh, military uh, rule. The military institution cannot uh, govern and uh, rule a country or a people that rejects military rule. Also, the military rule is marginalized uh, socially, and uh, which is unprecedented in uh, Sudan's history. So the military cannot try to control and attempt to control uh, political power. So, we need a new uh, constitution and a, a transitional uh, period to a civilian uh, government. The military institution might uh, play some roles. However, uh, these uh, roles are not uh, political. There are uh, important uh, reforms that uh, should be implemented at the level of the security apparatus and the military forces. We are aware of the fact that uh, the military institution Uh, has its uh, own interests. Uh, first, they have their own ambitions and aspirations in controlling uh, power. Uh, second, they have their own interests that uh, they want uh, to preserve. And uh, uh, third, they have their own uh, they, they 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 have their own uh, fears because some military figures are have committed some atrocities and violations and they believe that the only protection they might have is to control the political power so how to deal with these various uh, layers 
how can we uh, deal with uh, their ambitions uh, and aspirations? How can we deal with the military interests? First, we have uh, to agree that these interests do not supersede the stability of uh, the economic stability of uh, the country. And uh, for, but we can agree, for instance, on the military uh, participation uh, or running uh, some uh, military and security related uh, industries or defensive uh, defense uh, industries. Uh, but they also should abide uh, by the rules of the Ministry of uh, Finance, and this public uh, these public funds uh, should be uh, run and uh, oversaw uh, by uh, the uh, government uh, in uh, transparency. And um, but the military could invest in uh, defense industries as long as they pay, uh, but. They are, as long as they pay their taxes and custom fees. Also, the military figures, whenever they assume more power, they have more freedom to practice their atrocities. However, Sudan needs a real justice. justice. We should implement and observe uh, justice previous crimes uh, should uh, be uh, solved they sh uh, pro um, uh, perpetrators should be prosecuted even if they reach uh, a given pos political uh, position they should be uh, prosecuted al bashir committed a lot of atrocities and uh, today he's in the prison a number of uh, uh, Bashir uh, regime figures who committed these atrocities are in prison uh, today and uh, cannot uh, use their previous political power to avoid uh, these sentences. So uh, these uh, crimes, uh, justice should be uh, respected and uh, we should take the right and respect the right of the victims. There was also another question that was discussed in all of your interventions that I want to address. You said that a number of regional powers are supporting uh, the military and uh, these regional powers believe uh, that uh, a military council would be in their best uh, interest. Do you as uh, change powers, do you have, are you doing, are you do you have any attempts? Are you trying to address these regional uh, powers? Have you been in contact with these regional powers? Or what are uh, the topics, perhaps that you are being that you are discussing? Are you uh, starting to have some sort of agreements with other change uh, powers in these regional countries? I also have another question in this regard. Of course, Sudan is facing political uh, and uh, difficult uh, challenges, but also economic challenges. Uh, you, and also there are uh, uh, powers of change that are trying to create a different future for Sudan. Do you have an economic vision that you could communicate to the international community to support the local economy in Sudan? Who would like to answer this question? So we want you to address the question of regional powers and the economic prospects of Sudan. Can I go first? Go ahead. I believe that all actors that, that intervene directly on, in the developments in Sudan, they are not aware of the dynamics in uh, the Sudanese uh, society. They think that they can impose some solutions on Sudan. And these attempts were uh, were repeated uh, continuously. 
And all of these attempts failed because of uh, the firm belief of the Sudanese people. When we have a unified uh, people, when the when the people agree on a given cause, it is impossible to impose on them a different uh, vision. Now, this is what the Sudanese people proved time and time again. I believe that the message that uh, should be understood by all is that democracy is the key to stability in Sudan. I do not believe that there is a more important uh, question or a more important issue than stability in Sudan. Instability in Sudan is threatening to all of the neighboring countries uh, and regional powers in the region. Mohammed, uh, do, you, you, do you have any attempts uh, to uh, communicate uh, this message uh, to the regional powers? Because they think that uh, they might think that uh, a free or democratic Sudan could uh, be a risk and a threat to them. I believe that to the Council of Powers of uh, Freedom and Change, and after uh, the fall of uh, the regime of al-Bashir, they had a foreign affairs uh, committee, and uh, the purpose of this committee was uh, to communicate with the friendly uh, neighboring countries and uh, those countries who have emb embassies in uh, Sudan. But I think that Khalid can answer this question better on uh, how you, the, how uh, the civilian uh, government communicated with uh, other uh, friendly uh, countries in the region. But what is important is to shed light on the fact that the situation and developments in Sudan are complicated. It's not a very easy uh, context. Any interference in uh, Sudan that is ignorant of the development and the reality of Sudan will have negative impact and repercussions on all uh, those countries who uh, support a military autocratic rule in Sudan. They should review and uh, rethink their strategies and pay attention to the fact that, that the people of Sudan is uh, still unified and has been unified for uh, the past four years, uh, taking part in uh, peaceful uh, protests and uh, is keen to impose its will. In reality, the international community, as Mohammed uh, said, the international community had a wrong image of Sudan. The international and regional uh, community, uh, the people of Sudan, proved time and time again uh, how uh, wrong the international community was when uh, al-Bashir regime fell uh, because the international community was actually pushing for a compromise between the political uh, parties and uh, the former uh, regime. However, this initiative uh, failed because of uh, uh, the will or due to the will of uh, the Sudanese people. And the international community should have understood the, the lesson how and uh, the regional countries should have understood this lesson. However, they did not. And some of these regional comp uh, countries supported uh, the military coup. What we, uh, the message we want to send to these countries is that it would be better for them uh, to uh, support uh, the causes of uh, the people of Sudan instead of supporting uh, the institution that aims at uh, oppressing uh, the people of Sudan and restrict the freedom of the people of Sudan. Because the people of Sudan at the end will have the last word. And I believe that uh, the last word of the people of Sudan will uh, see the, late, uh, the light of day. So uh, these regional countries should uh, support the people of Sudan instead of supporting uh, the military uh, institution, the military coup and the autocratic regimes uh, that lead uh, to uh, these uh, coups. Salma, since you have the floor, what is uh, the role that the SPA is playing today in uh, this 
current uh, context. Are you trying to have and play a similar role to that of the Tunisian Union of Professionals? You talked, you gave us uh, an historic overview of the SPA, but how do you perceive uh, the role of the SPA in the future and the coming month? At the SPA and the Sudanese uh, population, we are joining our brothers and sisters to build a stronger society. So our opposition uh, model is focused on solidifying and strengthening our regional uh, councils. At the SPA, we are working as well on uh, building our bases, our uh, supporting our syndicates and orders in uh, Sudan. As I have mentioned in my intervention, we uh, took the first measures uh, to establish and create syndicates uh, that uh, reflect uh, the points of view and the perspectives of uh, professionals in uh, Sudan. Uh, this is a part of uh, the political role because syndicates uh, play uh, political uh, roles in the framework of uh, the syndicate uh, in the syndicate uh, context. The main message today of the SPA is the following. We are building and establishing a strong uh, syndicates uh, to create a syndicate uh, movement, a strong syndicate movement in Sudan, which will be the main uh, pillar uh, to preserve and protect uh, democracy in uh, Sudan. This is uh, the main issue, the main topic that we are working on at uh, the SPA, in addition to the political uh, role uh, that uh, the SPA and the syndicates in Sudan uh, play. And we will not relinquish this role. We will uh, play this major uh, political uh, role uh, that uh, goes hand in hand with the uh, roles played by the syndicates and other professional movements. Thank you so much, Selma. There was also another uh, uh, question uh, directed uh, to uh, Dr. Uh, Muhammad. Uh, I believe it was a question to uh, Dr. Muhammad. Uh, are you? Is th are there any uh, fears of another uh, bloodbath similar uh, to that? Uh, of uh, the, uh, uh, are there any fears? Is there a likelihood uh, for the military or RSF to commit another bloodbath similar to uh, the June the 3rd massacre? And are the forces of freedom and change preparing uh, for such a scenario? Of course, there is. there are always fears and there is always this likelihood for the military or the security forces to utilize and weaponize and utilize force uh, uh, in uh, Sudan. However, we I believe that we have seen everything in Sudan. We have seen all sorts and forms of violence. We have seen uh, that uh, uh, peaceful protesters were targeted and hunted down. We have seen cases of rape, and uh, and we have seen military-grade equipment used against uh, peaceful protesters. I believe uh, that the vi uh, violations uh, them uh, these the same violations uh, will lead also to uh, 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 greater reactions. So, uh, these uh, violations uh, do not usually go unanswered or uh, whenever the military uh, violates uh, the main freedoms of these protesters, the situation will lead to another or we will see uh, uh, a different reaction. The military might utilize a force uh, to limit the, the protests. However, the reaction is contradictory. Whenever they use violence, we see a larger and larger numbers of uh, protesters and bigger protests. 
So I believe that the military will uh, not, I don't think the military will um, uh, try to uh, limit the protests because they, I think that they understood that they are not capable of restricting these protests, but uh, to the contrary, they are actually, these actions and violations are encouraging and mobilizing the Sudanese people to take to the street. But uh, I, I think uh, that uh, uh, this uh, popular pleasure would limit uh, these uh, violations and would limit uh, this military and security uh, response because, of course, uh, soldiers take uh, their orders uh, from higher above, from higher uh, ranking officers. And uh, I believe uh, that uh, these officers will uh, not uh, take uh, this uh, risk. once the international community and the regional powers uh, send a unified message uh, to uh, the political, uh, to uh, the military institution, this would uh, limit, uh, the, uh, limit the violations against uh, the protesters. We still have uh, five minutes in this discussion. I have one question that I want a short answer to. A number of uh, attendees uh, might feel that today we are at, a, at a standstill. The UN had an initiative uh, that would relaunch the dialogue and uh, some uh, opposition uh, figures opposed this initiative. What do you think are the next steps, how can we move forward? Can we go back and adopt the same constitution? Or do you think that a dialogue under the auspices of the UN could be the way forward? I will start with Mr. Khad. Khad, are you still with us? The way forward is First, uh, the uh, continuous uh, popular uh, pressure and uh, movement, and uh, also uh, increasing calls and demands uh, for a civilian uh, rule to put an end to the military coup and uh, create uh, the alternative government. As for the UN initiative, they have started their own consultations with the various uh, parties. Our, uh, our stance, our position is clear. We agree with the millions of uh, Sudanese who take to the street continuously uh, and they call for a civilian government. We would ask the UN not to utilize this initiative to legitimize the military coup or to find a way out for the military uh, coup. We cannot uh, go back uh, to the previous arrangement to, uh, with, with the military, which uh, the military put an end to in, uh, after the military coup. So uh, this initiative will be evaluated uh, based on how it answers uh, to the demands of uh, the uh, Sudan, Sudanese people, how if it respects, if it respects the demands of uh, the people of uh, Sudan, uh, also regional countries uh, ha sh have their interests. They should be interested in a stable uh, Sudan and a democratic Sudan. We in Sudan always uh, seek great uh, relations with uh, the neighboring countries. And we do not intervene in the affairs of our neighboring countries. So uh, these are uh, the principles that we will try to 
or our uh, declared stance. Mrs. Salma, any uh, future steps? What's the way to move forward? Be brief. As you have mentioned, and now we are at a, at a standstill. We are at, at a standstill because General Al Burhan is insisting on staying at and playing a political role in Sudan. I believe the first step to solve the political situation, the political crisis in Sudan, is the dismissal and resignation of General Al Burhan. The second step is to figure out uh, the political uh, regime and the governance regime in Sudan. We have a number of uh, interests in uh, Sudan. How can we uh, manage the military's interests and ambitions in uh, Sudan? We want a civilian government and uh, also to restrict uh, the uh, uh, and to limit uh, the political interference of uh, the military uh, junta. So I believe that the military institution should uh, suffice themselves with uh, the prerogative that was given to them by the constitution and to play its real role and not try to interfere with the political uh, process. We also need a strong civilian uh, government that would lead the Sudan in the coming uh, period as for society as a whole, we want a strong society that would uh, actually protect and continue calling uh, for a strong state capable of finishing the democratic transition process and that would guarantee that the military institution will not seize power in Sudan. Thank you so much, Salma. Dr. Muhammad, uh, your last words. Uh, do you have any final observations, uh, remarks? Because I want to uh, thank also uh, the interpreter. Thank you uh, so much. Uh, I believe that uh, we are facing a crisis, a crisis that was created by the military coup. In October 25th, this military coup put an end to the political transition and democratic transition in the Sudan. I tried to impose and force um, the military rule on uh, the Sudanese people. However, all was, uh, we are uh, facing a path uh, toward uh, a new transitional uh, democratic transitional uh, path in uh, Sudan. This path would require first that uh, uh, all uh, military uh, leaders uh, should be dismissed, especially those who took part in the military coup, because they lost any, they, because it is impossible uh, to uh, have a dialogue with them. Uh, they uh, uh, signed uh, the constitutional uh, document and actually violated uh, their own uh, document and also were behind the massacre of uh, the 3rd of uh, June. There is no trust between uh, the people and the military institution uh, today. So uh, uh, we should also think about how uh, the military institution should be uh, reformed and reorganized to be not to ensure that it doesn't interfere in the political uh, process. And that would require that uh, the military institution be led by new uh, military leaders. Second, we cannot talk about any form of uh, coexistence or uh, sharing power between uh, the military and the uh, civilian uh, forces. And the uh, military institution should accept uh, the demands uh, of uh, the people and also abide by uh, the rules and uh, the methods 
of uh, civilian uh, government. Uh, they also uh, should implement and uh, respect the Juba uh, Peace uh, Accord. So at the moment, we should exert pressure on the military institution and also work on solidifying and mobilizing uh, the opposition uh, base and reorganizing the opposition, in addition uh, to exerting pressure on the international community for them to uh, support uh, the option uh, the uh, the choice of uh, the people of uh, Sudan because uh, this is the way out even if uh, another uh, regional country uh, does not want to see democracy implemented and observed in Sudan however if they want uh, stability in Sudan they should uh, respect and support the choice of uh, the Sudanese people thank you uh, Muhammad thank you Khalid thank you Salma I would like to thank uh, the panelists and attendees uh, hopefully we manage to answer the question what's next for uh, Sudan uh, thank you so much for your valuable uh, interventions. I would like to thank you all for taking part in uh, our session today. I would like also to thank uh, the interpreter. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we wish uh, all the luck uh, to the people of uh, Sudan. Hopefully we'll see more uh, justice uh, in Sudan. Uh, thank you so much and see you in the upcoming session. Today's session was uh, recorded and will be on YouTube and also on the Facebook page of uh, the Arab Reform Initiative. Hopefully we will see you to, we'll see you as well in our future uh, sessions uh, on uh, the transition uh, and transition period and uh, change in Sudan. Thank you so much.